Hey guys, welcome to the first week of the Industry Independent Accelerator Program. And so in this first module, I'm just gonna go over what lies ahead of the entire program. So you have a general overview of what you, you should be expecting and what you're gonna be looking forward to doing. And please remember that everything in this entire program is set up in a specific order so then you can actually execute in the best way possible. Because if you miss out on any of the beginning parts, you might not be as effective as you could be when you're actually executing all the strategies and techniques that we have in here. So what we're gonna be covering in this module is our main purpose and objective. So explaining why we're here, I think that's really important when you're coming into a program like this where it, it is gonna be very intensive and we need to remind ourselves of like what we're actually trying to achieve here and become really clear on the end goal, like why we wanna be doing what we're doing, right? And why you're here why you've signed up to this program. And then we're gonna come into general housekeeping and so that's just the basic fundamentals of like how to uh, contact us if you need any help with getting logged into your your membership area, into the portal, if there's any issues there or any, te any, any technical issues or you need some kind of help with um, support in terms of your membership or whatnot. So that's, that's gonna cover all that. And then we're gonna get, get into important things to remember going into this. And so that's gonna be more so about, and so important things to, to remember coming into this. And so that's things that you have to remind yourself when you're going into a program like this, like what you actually need to continuously remind yourself so then you can actually make the most out of this and not get distracted and, and fall off track because you start worrying about what other people are doing um, and essentially the entire transformation that you're going to be going through and what what is actually going to happen from this A to B process. Then we're going to go, go over an entire overview of the program, just give you a quick uh, guide of like what each week is going to be covering so then you have an understanding of like how the entire structure works and why it's set up the way it is. And as I was saying before, like you want to be following that structure to a T and not like skipping out in sections because you know, when we get to those later stages of the entire program, we want to make sure that we've got all our bases covered and you can implement like the best strategies possible, right? And then finally, we're going to go over some real life examples of the system in fact, so whether that's like past clients that I've had that are now touring, uh, where they started out and they were either just doing a rebrand or they were completely from scratch, um, starting from the ground up. And um, as well as real life examples that I've used in my own career, where I've, how I've actually created opportunities for myself and gotten to where I needed to be. And so first of all, let's talk about the objective, right? I think the importance of why we're here is that we wanna have the end goal of being able to tour, right? That's why we're all here. We wanna be able to tour, live off the music industry, live off producing, live off touring, and be able to be financially stable, be able to write music when we want to, and and be able to put out music and actually receive a reciproc reciprocation from our fan base, right? We want people to be actually know about us and that our efforts don't get overlooked. Like that's, that's the, some of the biggest issues we, most artists have is that they put out really good music, nobody knows who they even are because they haven't ever been able to execute on so many different levels prior to that. Um, and eventually they lose hope and they end up quitting. And you see so many talented artists that quit because they don't know how to transition and they, they lose that momentum. And because they didn't make that move when it needed to happen, they just end up quitting because they feel like they've been in the game for too long and nothing's even happened for them. So why is it harder to do this than before? It's because there's so much oversaturation right now. If you think about it, look at the entire music industry, how many producers are out there now everyone is producing now if you if you look back 10 years ago very different but 10 years ago hardly anybody even knew what like production was it wasn't a very mainstream kind of thing it was very overlooked and same with djing like there wasn't even that many people who were djing now almost everybody has some understanding of djing and what it, it's actually about as well as production and so it's a very common hobby and obviously there's a lot of people have have gone from the hobby aspect to actually making this into a full-blown thing. And so because of oversaturation, if there's so much oversupply, that means that our audience have has 
an endless amount of choice. So think about it this way. What are you going to do to differentiate yourself from the other hundreds of thousands of people doing the exact same thing as you and possibly making very similar music to you as well? And so we're going to cover all that as well um, later through this program of how you're going to differentiate yourself and stick out compared to everybody else. Because if you think about it, an average listener can only listen to so many people at a certain time. Like if you even ask yourself, like how many artists do you listen to on a regular basis? Like you generally have a certain playlist of, you know, brand new songs that you've been listening to, or maybe there's a few new artists you've discovered, but you'll keep carrying through that kind of same playlist or bunch of different tracks that you've got, right? It's not like you're listening to a thousand different artists at the same time. Maybe you like to go through Spotify continuously listening to new stuff, but generally people listen to the same amount of different artists. Like they listen to, for a while until it gets to the point where they move on to the next ones. So there's a very small window. There's a very small gap of opportunity there because people have such a very short attention span, right? So they continuously go through different artists. And you also look at TikTok, like that's another example of how the perception of how people consume media is completely different now. Like it's a very short attention span. Like people cycle through content like within seconds, right? That's TikToks and Reels now. And that's how people start to consume music as well. If you think about it, when somebody listens to a bass track, for example, a lot of the time they'll skip to the drop and they won't listen to the full thing. So the attention span is different now and therefore we have to have a different approach. And I also want you guys to remember why you actually started this journey as a producer because this is this is a really tough road and you'll get lost along the way. And you have to keep reminding yourself why you're actually doing this in the first first place. Like, what? Well, so you really need to remember why you started this journey as a producer because it's a really tough road to get to where you need to be to become a touring artist and and stick out from the rest. And so you need to carry this through this entire program and as well as the rest of the journey. Why you're doing this? Why you're doing this? Because so many people lose their passion, and that's the worst thing you can possibly do. The worst thing that can happen to you as an artist is lose your passion. Like, because once once you lose the passion you will no longer want to do what you've been doing. Like those couple of years that you've spent completely invested in something can just vanish like that, like it was never even a thing. And this happens very often because people don't get to where they need to be in a certain time frame. Like you actually have a time limit, like you need to get there faster. And that's why we built this program because we want people to actually achieve these things faster so before they lose that passion, they lose that hope and then they stop producing and then their dream is just ended by choice not because of the rest of the industry but by choice because they they realize there's they, they don't see an end end game they don't see the end goal they can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and so, so that's why you need to take action and try and get to where you need to be as soon as possible before that happens and you might say oh i'm always going to be passionate about music you don't know that like in it's five years a lot can change in five years a lot can change for anybody um, but especially in the music industry, so so many different things change. Like you, you can see some of the bigger artists, they're, they're getting to a point where they've lost their passion despite the success they've achieved because there's so many different variables that have changed in their life or on social media, like social media platforms aren't the same that they used to be or touring isn't the same as it used to be or it's too intensive for them. And so they stop doing it and they lose their passion as to why they're actually produ- being a producer. So the transformation that we're trying to achieve here is we want to master all the social media platforms, so every single one, and we want to bend it to our will. So knowing each one in, inside and out and, and implementing ways so then when we build up one platform, it funnels over to the other. So it, it continuously works like a flow state. So as soon as we grow, let's say, our Instagram, that's going to funnel over into our Facebook or let's say, or like through a Facebook group, let's say, and then the Facebook group, we start doing some sort of email giveaway and we, we build email contacts through that, or we ask people to comment below and we'll get um, people to subscribe to the YouTube channel for a free sample pack and so on and so on. And, and creating value through that and, and, and making all the platforms connect in some way. So we're gonna be really doing a lot, of, a lot of things like that to a lot of creative ways of building up our social media um, that people generally don't do. We're also going to be mastering uh, opportunities for yourself. So how we can actually create opportunities for yourself and not wait on others to do it for us, which is the hallmark of this entire program. Because most of the time, artists have this conception of how misconception of how 
a manager has to come to you. But this is this goes back to how everything's changed in the industry because there's so much oversaturation, right? That means that everybody is trying to everybody is like trying to do the same thing as you, right? And managers have like an endless amount of choice. So they're not actually running after people anymore. They're expecting you to come to them because they already have so many people doing the same thing. This is the new norm now, guys. Like you need to be pitching to managers. You need to be bringing something to the plate that other people aren't to the table. And so that's what we're going to be teaching a lot about in this program is how to actually not only get the attention of these high-end contacts and get them after, like invested into what you're providing, but we also want to be showing you how you can actually create all this value for yourself so then you have like an attractive brand and social media so then when you actually reach out to these contacts and establish yourself there's a higher chance of you actually converting them onto your team and actually them giving you a go so the next thing is attract the fan base and team of your dream so ultimately that's that's the main goal here is to become a touring artist but in order to facilitate that we need to attract a fan base and a team those are really two two main important things here that are going to facilitate that change. So you need to have that foundation, which is the fan base. So then when you actually achieve things, that that hype carries over into the next thing and the next thing. Because let's say you put a label release out on like a really good label and you get, you get a ton of attention, but people come over to your social media and they say you've only got like 100 likes on some of your posts uh, or like you've only got like 50 followers or something. Um, and I know a lot of you guys who are coming through this program are, lo- are a little bit more established in the sense that you've got a little bit more going on. However, the same thing applies to like all your platforms and that's, that's what everybody looks at. It, they, it only takes one, one moment for, for somebody to change their opinion on how they perceive your brand. If they see that there's something doesn't quite add up where you've got really good music but you've only got a few followers they're not even going to necessarily listen to your stuff because that's how people perceive things online. Somebody's much more inclined to listen to your music if they see that you've got a lot of engagement and followers as opposed to somebody that only has like 10 followers, right? That's just the way it is. So general housekeeping. So ideally what you need to be doing is executing everything in this program within the six weeks. So the students that we've already had through this program and students that I have been consulting with even prior to building this program have always gone hard. And I make sure I only work with people who are the ones who are gonna implement what I'm actually telling you to do and doing it like right now and making that the focus point. Like this is what you need to be focusing on. You can put music to the side for a little while and not make it your entire focus. You can still be writing music. I mean, if you're already in the scenario where you've got a regular release schedule and you're still releasing music and you don't wanna stop that, then sure have that as a focus, but don't make it your entire focus because for this next six weeks, you want this to be where you're at. And the reason why I say this is that don't worry about losing your momentum if you're not already hype as fuck because momentum can be gained just as you lose it, as easy as you lose it. Like you can have all the hype in the world and you lose it, right? But then you can gain it back and it will be like nothing ever happened. I think a lot of people is that the, the issue a lot of people have is that they, they worry about losing hype and they think once they lose it, that's going to be the end. Like if they stop releasing for six months, that's going to be the end of the world. There's been some artists who stopped releasing for two years and they had a complete hiatus and then they come back and it's like nothing ever happened because they had that relaunch in the right way. So it's not even about having that, con- that consistency. It's about executing at the right time and maintaining that hype. So it's actually getting the hype in the first place and then maintaining it. If you haven't got hype, then it's not, it shouldn't be an issue. If you haven't got a hype, if you haven't gotten any hype, that, that's probably why you're in this program in the first place because you want to have that hype. You want, to, you want everybody to be going nuts about you and talking about you and having this big surge of fans coming over to your page and liking your stuff and following you and checking every day and seeing new followers, right? That's what you want to be getting out of this. So our students go hard and that's why we've had so many people sign to high tier labels, they get the artist manager that they've always wanted to be with and they get signed to a booking agent. Preferably one that is actually gonna take action and get them booking, get them bookings right away. 
And so if you follow this program step by step and you are making good music and you consistently have a plan of like how you're going to continuously put out that music and not have any chokeholds and not going to stop at some point, then you will succeed and you will get these results. So if you want these results, you have to actually take action for yourself. So it's not going to be, I'm not going to get the results for you. I'm going to show you how you can get the results and you're going to have to implement that. And that's how you get the results. So it's not going to happen if you just watch the content, like you actually have to implement these trainings and do it. So like as you're watching week one and as we go through branding and whatnot like that, you need to start working on your brand and seeing how you can implement that right then and there. And then when we come to the coaching calls, and this is why the coaching calls are so important, is that when you come to the coaching calls, you can ask us, myself or any of the other coaches, how you can improve what you already have. So the coaching is going to be more so on a QA and a basis. So like whatever you're struggling with currently that isn't already answered in the content, that's what you use that for. So you don't want to waste any time not knowing these foundations here and knowing them as the best of your ability. And that's why we're covering this all in the, the videos. So then when you come to the coaching calls, there's no time wasted in that hour. Like you literally get straight to all the questions you might have specifically on your career on like how you could make the next move. And that's what we're going to be using that for. So I'll know if you're not consuming and implementing the content because if you start asking me questions about things that are in the program, that are already in the program, then I'll know that you haven't been consuming it properly so and implementing it. So make sure that you're implementing as you go. Don't just watch the full course and then go, oh, okay, now I'm going to implement. Like implement as you go because there's a lot of content here and especially when it comes to the strategies and things that we're going to be doing later on. So I also want to make sure that you join the conversation in our Facebook group. So the community aspect of this program is going to be really important. I'll touch on that some more in the upcoming modules on why the community is so important as well. Um, but ideally you want to be networking with the other students in this program because they're all going to be in the same place as you. They're all on that trajectory of becoming a touring artist or they already are. And you want to be networking with, you want to be in the same circle as these kind of people. You don't want, you, you'll find a lot of the other music platforms. Uh, and I can tell you firsthand because I built two of them that have thousands of students built into all of them, um, at a time on a continuous basis, you'll find that there's a huge gap between the learning curve. So there's a lot of artists that are just starting out and they're learning you know, their basics, their foundations, they're trying to get better at sound design, let's say. And then there's like a lot higher skilled artists who are you know, getting artists playing their tracks out or they're trying to source bookings and whatnot. So there's a huge gap in that skill level. And that's why this group is really great because it's all just high tier people it's like you know the top gun of music producers all just the best of the best right and so it's going to be really good for you to be able to share your wins in here um discuss other strategies or how you've implemented what strategies are in this program into your own brand and strategy and of course how to get help and support so if you guys need any help regarding uh, your membership or like logging into the portal or anything like that at any time, you can contact me at that email right there. So if you want to save that, um, you can shoot me an email at any time you want and I'll reach out to you. So important things to remember. And so firstly, I just want to say there's no magic pills here. You must do the work if you expect change. So like I was saying before, you need to be implementing and you need to be making sure implementing is your priority here. And these lessons are very crucial. Like the mindset itself is what's going to not only make you better at your artist career, but also as a better person. Like you're going to be able to evaluate situations better. You'll be able to think more strategically in all walks of life. Uh, that's the reason why all our clients and as well as myself have been able to implement and create opportunities, not only in our artist career, but also in other forms of business because we're able to think differently that most people don't and they just think one-sided about how to approach things and not thinking about going outside the box. And I also want to obviously instate that you can't have excuses in in your music career. Like you can't look for excuses as to why you're not achieving what you're achieving. Like, oh, it's bullshit. I'm not in the right place because somebody did this before me and, and they stole my idea, blah, blah, blah. There is more opportunities to come and you'd be surprised to hear how often that everybody's had it tough, whether it's in their music career or it's in their life. And some of us have it way worse off than you think. 
and it's it's the same for the artists that are already really big. Some of them got it handed them on a plate. Some of them really had to work hard. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because it's only about your career. It's only about the way you've designed it. So you are responsible for what you have right now and what you're going to be getting as well, as well as the results you're going to get in this program. Like Whatever you put into this is what you're going to get out. And so you want to embrace the change. So you're choosing to play at a higher level here, and that is going to attract resistance from yourself. Because anytime we're trying to make a drastic change and we push ourselves harder, your body and mind is obviously going to be like, no, I don't want to do this because this is difficult and this doesn't give me dopamine easily. So that's why you have to continuously remind yourself why you're doing this because throughout this course, it's going to be hard for you to implement these things and then also be maintaining your social life or your general to-do lists of your day or your work-life balance and everything like that. But you have to make this priority and it's going to suck, especially if, if you want to really, if you really want to implement this properly, you want to put music to the side a little bit or completely and just completely make this your focus, the six weeks of just improving your brand and your marketing and your strategies and learning how to create opportunities for yourself. So then when those six weeks are over, you can just go straight to town on releasing stuff and implementing these things. So then when you when you can have all this stuff ready to go, you can go back to focusing music again. And it's you, you don't have to worry about any time wasted, like time that you could have been using to write music because that time that that time delay doesn't mean anything as i was saying before like if if you wait a year to improve your brand or do a complete rebrand it's worthwhile because people people tend to have a first hand impression of like what you put out at certain times and then they forget about you just like that so you need to you need to release music on a higher tier level you need to be putting out a brand on a higher tier level you need to be having a marketing strategy at a high tier level that continuously shows your brand and music to people to the same people consistently until they until you win them over and so that's why you need to embrace that change and as well as you need to do the work so you have to actually be showing up to these trainings and doing the work like you can't just be watching the videos and then thinking okay i i know what's in this program now and now things are just going to happen so And you don't want to be leaving it until the very end of the program. You want to be implementing as you go because there's a lot of stuff in here and it's structured in a certain way. So then as you progress through the course, you're going to continuously improve your brand and eventually get it to the point where you're able to actually facilitate the requirements of becoming a touring artist. So you can actually start reaching out to these artist managers and booking agents and facilitating these shows and growing your brand from that way. So how to not use this program. So obviously there's going to be some students in this program who already are high level artists and you're in here because you want to be improving what you've already got. You want to be improving your brand and your social media strategies, let's say, or maybe you want to learn how to create more opportunities based off of what you already have and get even bigger up on that level. But you want to remember not to feel like you know everything when you're coming into this because there's a lot of fundamentals here that you've probably missed out as you've been building your career. Like maybe you're somebody who has had a lot of growth recently on TikTok, but you don't have any of the other fundamentals in place. And that's why when you transitioned your fan base over to other platforms, it doesn't reciprocate as well. Or most of them don't actually move over to the other platform because it's not the same content and they only know you for a certain reason, which might not be even for music. They might know you for just some other funny videos you've been doing. And so... This is why a lot of people fail is because they, they focus on just the growth and they don't have the fundamentals in the first place. And when they actually re- they actually achieve some kind of um, big thing in the industry, like let's say they get a collab with, with somebody massive, they get a bunch of hype and everybody's talking about them. Like, who's this person? Wow, amazing. Like they've come out of nowhere. But then they often fall short straight after that because they don't have anything in place. They don't have any foundation and they don't have anything to follow up from that hype. And so they they become easily forgotten or they just get referred to as, oh, it was that guy who did that collab with that other person. And so they lose that hype as soon as they get it. And so this is a lot of high-level issues that artists tend to come through. And that's why we're going to be going over a lot of the fundamentals and foundations. So then when you actually achieve those things, you don't lose that hype. So I also want to talk about jumping the gun here. And this is very important because people tend to 
try to they'll put out some music and they'll get a bit of reception they'll get a bit of people talking about their music and then suddenly they go okay i'm high value now i'm going to start talking to high industry people i'm going to start trying to talk to bigger artists and just hit their dms the issue here is that people tend to give first-hand impressions so if you if you don't have like your branding and social media and your music is the best it can possibly be then people tend to have that first-hand impression and they'll they'll think oh well He's pretty average, so I'm not going to take into account of what they're trying to sell to me. So if you st- if you're trying to like send your tracks to somebody that's high tier, they'll just often like read your message and and won't even they'll read like the first few letters of of your message after they see that you only have a few followers or something because they assume that you don't have good music. So you need, or maybe they'll look at your 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 Instagram and they'll realize that you've got like a really bad brand, like there's nothing here cohesive, and it just looks unprofessional, and therefore they're not going to even take into consideration of what you're trying to give them. Like let's say you're trying to send them music, so that's why you don't want to do that. You want to you want to wait until you've got everything in found all the foundations down, and you want to make sure that you've actually got a bit of momentum, like there's a bit of traction going on and then you start hitting up people and they actually all start talking about you as well at the same time and it becomes like a snowball effect and so we also want to talk about skipping modules here so as i was saying before everything that's made in this course it's structured in a certain way so then it ties together and works cohesively so then you actually achieve these results faster like you don't want to be you don't want to skip to the the facebook ad section and then start implementing that when you don't actually have the solid foundations, you don't have your brand as the best it can be and you don't have um, actual engagement happening and you haven't figured out how to actually make that um, community aspect happen in the first place. So we need to facilitate those things first before we can do that, before we can you know, start using ads and making them useful because you don't want to be wasting your money on, on ads when you don't actually have a good product. Like you need to make sure everything's the best it can possibly be and that's why we've, we've structured it out so ads we're going to be worrying about in a later week and all those kind of strategies, all these paid strategies that are going to create like the entire system here. And also telling stories instead of asking questions. So everybody's time here is very finite. So when it comes to the coaching calls, especially everybody's only got like an hour on these coaching calls. If it's like a group coaching call, or even if it's a one-on-one co- coaching call that you're in, you've only got an hour. So you want to be using it to to your best ability. You want You don't want to be wasting on on general questions. And that's why we've got these, this whole content here because we want to fill out all the general stuff, all the foundations, so then when it comes to the coaching, we can tackle the specific issues that are specific to your career. Because like I always say, there are unique problems which require unique solutions when it comes to like an actual artist's career. Like the, a lot of the general stuff can already be um, figured out because there's enough resources for that. But when it comes to the individual problems, that's where the coaching comes in. Comes in, And that's why I wanna make sure that you, do, you don't come on a coaching call and start telling me about your life story, about music and, and why you got into it and why um, you had such a struggle and, and, and how it's, the music industry has been so tough on you. Instead, use that time to ask specific questions on bettering your career, like what you can do to improve it here and what you could do to make the brand better and things like that. So that's what that time is gonna be used for. So things to watch out for. So you don't wanna be worrying about where you're currently at and where you could be. A lot of artists tend to have this issue where they're, they're worrying a lot about what they could have done better or how they're so far behind with everybody else in the music industry and they're not quite touring and it's been many years and they're not getting any traction. But you gotta remember and you gotta remind yourself constantly that everybody grows differently. Some people, it takes them like five, six years before they actually get that hype when they finally figure out how to actually do it. And some, it only takes them a year and then they finally implement everything. And it's because everybody tends to take a lot more time to figure out these processes that we're teaching in this program. They don't realize that they need to come up with some kind of actual strategy. And they think that just putting out music consi- consistently is where they're gonna actually get the result. But there's a lot more to it now, as I was talking about before. Also want to highlight, don't analyze, overanalyze and wait for the right time. So you have to be just continuously implementing, especially with this program. And as well as when we get to the creating opportunity section of this program, it's going to be high volume of what you've got to be doing. So we're going to be reaching out to a lot of people who align with your project in order for you to actually make the change that you need. And also focusing on the content. So 
content coaching and community so like the entire aspect of this entire program's content you got to be focusing on that and implementing it like i was saying before so we're going to go over a quick overview of the program week one is branding and planning so that's just straight to making sure that your brand is the best it can possibly be and we're going to make sure you've covered all your bases there most of you already have a solid brand but there's going to be things that you've already missed out and could be improved upon and we need to make this we need to make sure that this is done the best of our ability because that way when we're actually marketing our brand there's no there's nothing we fall short on like the branding has to be the best it can be the the product itself, product itself can be can be, has to be the best it can be so then when we market it we get the best results right <clears throat> and then we're going to come up with some kind of plan on how we're going to execute all the things that we want to do then week two, we're going to set up the foundations to grow. And as I was saying before, we need to have a solid foundation. So then when we create opportunities that we can transition in, into more things because they overlap because we actually have something to go off of in the in the first place, right? And then week three, we're going to be building up your, your, your presence online and offline. So that's essentially getting you um, a bigger presence over social media and then also helping facilitate you get onto getting shows and bookings for yourself and then eventually getting a, a booking agent and how you're going to transition into getting to that stage. Um, a lot of people, they tend to get stuck in this area. They, they put out good music, they got a decent social media, but then they don't know how to get shows and then transition into becoming a headliner. And becoming a headliner is one of your priorities right now because once you've got that, then you can use that as leverage to get more opportunities and, and, and get a, a booking agent if you haven't already. And then as well as... Uh, help you get a high tier manager and then get get with like a really decent international strategy for like getting shows elsewhere so you can be getting bookings in other countries as well once you've kind of got a good stronghold of doing headlines and you've got all the data to back that up and video footage to back it up as well and then week four we've got ads and funnel strategies so that's going to be able to allow you to improve what you already have so once you have all the foundations and you're getting shows and everything like that, you can use ads and funnel strategies to in increase the engagement rate of all your content and create a funnel strategy so then when you actually build momentum on one platform, it moves into the next one and the next one. And so there's going to be all sorts of funnel strategies in there. Like let's say you have a YouTube video and in the YouTube video, you, you talk about a sample pack that you're making and you're going to be releasing it in the the uh, fan base group that you have, like it's a special fan group um, on Facebook. And you're gonna give out a competition. So whoever makes the best song idea out of the samples that you make in this video, you're gonna give away some sample pack that you're making or some other prize, some other incentive. And so then they join your Facebook group to join the competition, but then they also engage with the rest of your community because not only you're making a fo focus point of putting content on YouTube, but you're also growing other platforms at the same time. And you could be doing this in the same way on, let, let's say, Discord. So week five, we're gonna be creating opportunities for yourself, and that's essentially how to get a manager, how to get a booking agent. Um, doing these things yourself, so you're not waiting around on other people, and that's gonna be heavily based around email pitching and being able to create value for yourself so then when you pitch to these people that they see the difference in your brand versus somebody else because like I was saying before, there's so much competition now and you need to find out a way to differentiate yourself from everyone else and how are you going to stick out. And so we're going to make sure we nail all of that before we actually reach out to all these contacts that we need to build our team. And eventually, for so for week six, we're going to transition into becoming a touring artist. So that's where we're putting everything that we've learned in this program into one full thing and one full package. And so over the course of all the content that you learn and as well as all the coaching, we're going to ensure that by the time you get to this point, you have all the needs required and you're ready to go in terms of you're ready to go and reach out to all these, these higher level contacts and facilitate what you need to do to become a touring artist. So expectation of the music industry. So referencing back to what we just covered over those six weeks in the overview. So the reason why I've structured it out in this way is because these are the pain points of the music industry so week one which was branding and planning you must have a solid iconic brand that's an expectation of the music industry you have to week two setting up your foundations to grow on the offset that's you must have a thriving fan base and community week three was building up your presence online and offline which 
the music industry has the expectation that you must have a proof of concept that you can actually tour. You need to have proof that you can bring in people to shows. Like that's why booking agents will take you on if they know they they have the conviction that they can sell you to events, right? And get you on tours. So they they need that proof of concept that you can actually do it. So that's what we're doing in week three. And then week four, as I was talking about ads and funnel strategies, all those things, you must have high play counts across all the, all the platforms. And that's where that comes in. And you need to have like the high engagement rate across like, you know, people actually commenting on your stuff. You can't have just like, you know, one comment on each thing and then expect to be playing headline shows everywhere. It's just not how it works anymore. And so week five, it's gonna be creating opportunities for yourself. And that's because you need to be showing that you're resourceful in the music industry. Because if, if you're coming to a higher tier manager and saying, I've made this amazing music, and I've got this artist support, that's great. But if you if you also come to them saying, I've already got a booking agent, I did this, I did that, and you've already facilitated a few other things, they're gonna, they, it's gonna be a much higher chance that they take you on because they can see that you have potential and that you did all this by yourself. Imagine what you'd be like if you had an amazing team. And that's how they perceive that. If they can see that you've already d- been super resourceful. They're like, well, if I jump in, shit's gonna be way better. So, and because that way you're going to be focusing on just music. And that's how you differentiate yourself in the music industry is by, is by showing that you're resourceful. And we're going to cover all that in week five. And then week six is transition to become a touring artist, like I was talking about before. And that's the ultimately the unique selling point. So I just wanted to have that comparison there between the expectation of the music industry and with the pain points, but also comparing it to the actual program itself so you know why it's structured in the way it is and why it has all these things. And that's why they're so important. So the core system of industry set. So the main thing that we push out here, and that's why this program works so well, is because we have a supreme strategy. We're going to create a strategy that actually gets us to the end game where we want to be, you know, become a touring artist. Launch pattern effect. So that's essentially creating opportunity for yourself and then launching into another thing and another thing and another thing. And so finding ways to make them all interlinked. So let's say, for example, you sign with some high tier label and or even it's a mid tier label and then you find out that all the artists on that same label all use the same booking agency. They're all same to the same booking agency, right? And that way you can ask that you could then ask the label to uh, introduce you to that agency because it's, it's the label's benefit that you're doing well. So you can actually get that transition from that label to a booking agency just like that because because of that association. And so that's that's how you got to get creative with your thinking is, is trying to create opportunity that launches onto another opportunity. And then from there, you try and decipher how you can make an opportunity out of that thing. And that's how we're going to play this entire game. That's how we're going to, be- going to become touring artists is because we're going to keep using one opportunity to get the next one and the next one. And you're going to keep being creative in that sense and see how everything's interlinked. And that's how all the, all the past students have been able to do things for themselves is because they did this and they planned everything out and then they created these opportunities for themselves. And then they got with a high tier manager that actually can take care of them. And then finally, the last thing is funnels and high value retargeting. So essentially creating a really good funnel system and then making everything work cohesively so then it retargets. And then because you have such good content, people keep coming back to your content and keep seeing you everywhere to the point where they understand that you're a high value person, like you're a high value brand and that they should actually consider listening to what you're providing. Because a lot of times people will see your brand and they'll see you, you on social media, but they won't even listen to your stuff because they've got so many other people showing up in their face. Like there's so much other content showing up in their social media or there's other artists that they already are listening to. So in order for you to uh, t- take that attention away from them, you need to be continuously showing up all over social media in front of these same people over and over again until they get converted into a fan. And so, that's, so putting all those three things together is how industry set and this program works so well. So just gonna go over some real life examples of the system. So one of my very first clients that have came through the program, Neotech, so he had a completely different brand and the issue that he was facing is that he wanted to do a full rebrand and figure out how to Um, launch effectively and what we did is we talked through coming up with a good theme and a good message and vision behind the actual brand itself and uh, tied that in with the actual visual aesthetics and we're going to get to that in the next module of this uh, entire uh, week as well 
So he launched his brand and got tons of attention and then he got noticed by a really good manager who looks after guys like uh, Blank and Ray Volpe and he's already doing shows now and playing playing around Australia. And same with Bad Void, he was another student who was already doing quite well, was already signing with high-tier labels like Bygore and he was with a decent management but he found that they weren't quite creating any opportunities for him and that's that's the you know the main thing of a manager is to help you make your career transitions easier like they they should be creating opportunities for you so then you can move on to the next stage of your career and so there was a lot of a lot of things that they were worrying about things that didn't really matter and so he was wasting a lot of time and so he didn't know how to go about that and so I helped him transition from the current manager he had to a better one, how he sourced, how he found the better one was figuring out a strategy based off of other artists that were similar to him and then sourcing a bunch of different managers and pitching to each one and finding the best fit. And then eventually out of the top three that were interested, he picked the best one that was best suited for his situation and now he couldn't be happier. And so for myself, I've used all the all the strategies that are in this program for every single opportunity that I've had because for a long period of my time, I didn't have a manager. I initially started off by myself and then I eventually had a manager, but I found that he was also worrying about things that didn't really matter, like mostly the accounting and finances and um, solidifying as a business. And a lot of time was wasted in, in areas like that, especially when it came to signing with labels. There was a lot of legal stuff that he would worry about that really didn't even matter because at the end of the day, I just needed to create opportunities. And that was like the core thing that you need to do. And I realized that. And so what I ended up doing was I started thinking as a manager would. So how am I going to create opportunities for myself? And that's what I started doing. I started reaching out to other managers and getting their perspective on my music and, and my brand and everything like that. And I took the feedback into consideration and I realized I need to be better. I need to provide more. I need to show that I'm resourceful and that I can do this without a manager. And then when I started doing things myself, I noticed I achieved more things. So I landed an official remix for Nightmare and Fox Pavilion. And I did that all by myself because I was able to get my music uh, heard by a YouTube channel. And I, I submitted I submitted to a certain YouTube channel, it was Proximity, and they, they just put up the original of Flux Pavilion and Nightmare's song, Feel Your Love. And because they premiered it, I knew that they had an association with Flux Pavilion and Nightmare. And so I emailed Proximity and I said, look, I know you don't upload unofficial stuff because YouTube video, YouTube channels can't because they'll get copyright striked and, you know, taken down and they can't lose, they can't get copyright striked because they can lose their channel and, you know, lose money and everything. And so I said, I know you don't upload unofficial stuff, but considering you work with the original artists and, and team, could you reach out to them and ask if you could get, get permission to upload this track. So I was sending over my bootleg version, so it was unofficial. And I wasn't reaching out by framing it like, oh, can you please help me out and send this to them? I was more so framing it like I was providing value to him. So I was saying, can you reach out so then you can upload it to your channel? So providing value to this channel in that format. And so Blake Coppelson, who owns Proximity, he then surprisingly emailed Nightmares Management, who then emailed Flux Pavilion's management, and then Flux Pavilion's management, which is also Circus Records. Circus Records then emailed me saying, look, we've heard your track. We'd love to get it signed and contracted up as an official remix. And so then Blake then emailed me as well and said, look, I send your track off to Circus. They loved it. Congrats. Would I would love to also offer you, um, I would love to work with you on getting some remixes done from you on other tracks as well. You're killing it. And so... From that just single opportunity, that then opened up the doors for me to, to get signed to Circus Records and I did a six track deal and released two EPs on there. And then I, from there, I was able to get international artist support. So everybody in the bass music scene started to learn about me because I was on a good email list through Circus and so on. And so my career was built off of that, that, that decision I made to make that opportunity happen. So I did that myself and that's why the trajectory I had was so successful because I did it all myself. And I wasn't waiting on a manager to find me and then do it. So you can actually get signed to these high tier labels without a manager, but you can do it all by yourself. And so that's why I wanted to 
create this program essentially and so that I can show people that you can do it for yourself and you can't be waiting on other things to happen for you. So I'll just leave you with this quote, the future of your artist career starts now. So I'm excited for you guys to get through the rest of this program and I'll see you in a bit.